Hi, welcome back to our channel. My name is Alonzo. Today we're going to be diving into some of Panama's demographic data. Some very, very surprising things in there that we're going to uncover, as well as a couple of things in their census data. Before we get into that, though, a couple of housekeeping items. First of all, according to YouTube's data, close to 70% of you out there watching this video are not subscribed. So my question is why? You know, if you're watching these videos frequently, if you find the information's good, you're getting something out of it, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. You know, we're a small channel. It's going to help us out. It's going to help you out to hit the subscribe button and to hit the notification bell so that you can be notified of our future videos. Secondly, we want to remind you all that we're still in the pre-launch phase for our Panama Relocation online course. If you are interested in our course, you can scan the QR code on your screen or you can go to our website, which is PanamaRelocationOnlineCourses.com. There you can follow the icon for the online course, click on that and get the information about the course for enrollment if you're interested. Now many of you will be saying, okay, why do I need a relocation online course, Alonzo? I got all this information out here for free on YouTube and all of that. Okay, yeah, you do have some information out here, but most of the information out on YouTube, our channel included, you know, and there's some great content creators out there, but you're gonna see things like, you know, why move to Panama? What city should I live in? You know, which neighborhood of Panama City should I live in? You know, what can I expect to see or not see in Panama and things like that. What you are largely not going to get is the how. You know, how do you make this move? Like a step-by-step instruction. That's not really out there on YouTube and it's definitely not consolidated into one place. The other thing to keep in mind with YouTube is that people's attention spans are super short. So, you know, you have to get through these videos because, you know, people are going to drop off. They're not really paying that much attention. You may be serious, on the other hand, about making this move and really, really want some information. So when you get into an online course, more of a classroom type environment, we can take our time. We can slow down. You know, we can put all of the information out there because it's very difficult to just pack a bunch of information into one of these YouTube videos. It's almost impossible. We try to do our best, but for those of you who have been watching this channel, you already know the amount of level of detail that we go into and the information that we bring forth and the effort that we make to try to package that information up to give it to you in such a way that you can digest it and actually use it. So imagine what you're getting on this channel now, but leveled up, you know, three, four X. So what you're going to find out in the course as things like the timing with which you should get your paperwork for your permanent residency visas. It's very, very important because those documents do expire. So there's a process for that and a timing. When should you take your exploratory trips? You know, when doing your exploratory trips, what type of itinerary should you be planning for? Depending upon whether you're planning a week or two weeks or 10 days, we have different itineraries, sample itineraries that you can follow and things that you should be doing on these trips to make it more efficient for you, most efficient for you. We also have several checklists that begin as early as two years prior to your move so that you can know, okay, when I'm two years out from moving, you know, I need to be doing this, 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 and this. At the one year mark, I need to do this, 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 and this, and so on. We have checklists for six months, three months, one week, and even a moving day checklist, we have of things you need to do, make sure you have done on moving day. So that's the level of detail that we go into. Also, this particular video will give you a sample of some of the things in the subject matter that we go into that you're not gonna find anywhere out there on YouTube. Things like Panama's demographic data, you know, Panama's government structure, a deep dive into the culture, the laws, um, and the people of Panama so that you can know what to expect when you get here. There's gonna be a lot of <clears throat> things that we can cover more in detail in an online course. Also, it's going to be create a lot less stress and anxiety for you uh, to have a course like this or to have instruction uh, like this in a course. And not only that, it's gonna literally save you money because you're gonna avoid costly mistakes. So those are all of our goals that we have um, that's associated with the course and for helping people move to Panama. So with that, let's get into the video on Panama's demographic data 
So the first thing we gotta cover is the population, of course. Panama's population is just under 4.5 million people. About 1.4 million of those people live in Panama City, so a little less than one third of the people in the whole country live in Panama City. So yes, Panama City is a major metropolis, um, you know, 1.4 million, but it's not like super congested like a city like, uh, you know, Chicago or New York or things like that. You know, Chicago, you look 3.3 million people. So yes, it can feel that way when you're in traffic in the city and all of that, but it's still a big city. It has skyscrapers. It has all of the activities that big cities have and more. You know, Panama City is great, but you don't really have that feel of being super congested. And if you do, you can just leave that area and go out to any of these other areas because um, generally Panama is fairly sparsely populated, you know, when compared to a lot of areas. About 70% of the people do live in urban areas. Um, so when you get away from Panama City, other cities like David, um, you know, that have a larger population of people, is going to be pretty sparsely populated. So getting into some of the racial demographics, Panama census data that was most recently available was from the 2010 census. They had another census planned in 2020, which was, was, of course, delayed due to the pandemic. They conducted that census in 2022, late 2022. So a lot of that data is still being compiled. Um, so the recent data that they had, for, the most recent data that they had from the previous census was that 59% of the population is mestizo, which is native Panamanian and European, white European mixed. You gotta remember, Panama was conquered by Spain. So, you know, uh, a, a high uh, percentage of the population does have that lineage. So you also have 9% of the population during that census was noted as black or Afro-descendant. Another 7% was noted as mulatto or Afro-descendant and white European mix. Also, there was 7% white Europeans, a uh, high percentage of which are, of course, expats, as well as 6% Chinese. So that's kind of like the spread or the racial spread on Panama during that census. So everyone looked at those numbers and kind of knew, especially when it came to like the blacks, the black and the brown, you know, the, um, the black and the mulatto, as it was stated on there, that 16% number was way too low. You know, your eyes tell you that it can't be that low. And even the president in 2014 admitted as much. So there was an effort made ahead of the 2020 census, which again was delayed. There was an effort made to kind of educate people on what being Afro-descendant is because a lot of um, black Panamanians, you know, or Panamanians in general just kind of identify as Panamanian. You know, they don't really take a deep dive into their, you know, into their roots and their racial background at the same kind of level that maybe we do in the United States and in some other countries. So they wanted to educate them uh, a little bit more. So they put together a video. It's a short one uh, minute and 20 some second video. You all can check it out right now. Somos parte de una historia singular, llena de aportes, de anécdotas. Somos la fuerza, la alegría, el progreso. Somos la sazón, el ritmo. Hombro a hombro, hemos construido nuestro Panamá. En este censo del 2020, solicita que te pregunten cómo te autoidentificas. Afro panameño. Afrodescendiente. Moreno. Negra. Afrocolonial. Afroantiana. Es necesario saber dónde estamos y cómo estamos. Porque necesitamos. Mejor educación. Empleo. Salud. Vivienda digna. Y porque uno a uno, afropanameño, afrodescendiente, moreno, negro, afrocolonial, afrontillano. So basically what you get out of that video is that whether people identify themselves as negra or negro, moreno, you know, which is brown, you know, afro-colonial, 
uh, or you know, Afro Italiana, whatever it is you say that that's all Afro descendant. So they wanted to you know prepare the people so that they know you know basically what to put on the census. And just for your knowledge, Afro Colonial, um, those are the folks that uh, have that are descendants of people who came to Panama as slaves. The people actually who know that they have that lineage. Afro Antilliano or Afro Antilliana, the people who migrated to Panama, say to work on the Panama Canal from the Antilles or the Caribbean, um, maybe work on the canal and maybe even after the canal was built, they know that they know that their ancestors came from the Caribbean. So they call themselves Afro Antilliano or Afro Antilliana. But at the end of the day, you know, they're all black people and so the, the uh, country wanted them to identify as such on the census. And so as a result, um, the findings are that now 33% of the population is identified as Afro-descendant in this latest census. So we're going to get that data. It's all still being compiled. Of course, it means if that number goes up, some of these other numbers have to come down. So we kind of have to see how it all falls out. But as soon as we have the update here, We'll put out a very, very short video to update you all on that. But that may be a surprising result for some people. I guess for me, it's not, you know, walking around, you know, your eyes tell you, you know, you see a lot of black and brown people everywhere uh, here. So uh, it's not a surprising result for me. It may be a surprising result for some of you out there, because even in the United States, there's only 14 percent of the population is, is black. So <clears throat> um, that's that for the racial demographics. Getting into the religious demographics, uh, you have 75% of the people who are Catholics in Panama. You have another 20% of people who are Protestants. So there's a 4% other, like 1% Mormon. So what can you draw from this? Well, right off top, uh, that's 75 plus 20, you can right off top, 95% of Panamanians are believers in Christ. So, you know, if you're considering a move to Panama, um, you know, you have to take that into consideration, however you would like to take that into consideration, but that, those are just the facts, we're just presenting them here. So that's right off the top. 95% of Panamanians are believers in Christ. So when you dive into the 75% of the folks who are Catholic, you know, according to, you know, according to the values uh, within Catholicism, you know, Panama is a very, very conservative country. You know, they... Uh, they actually have in their constitution that marriage is between a man and a woman. That is written in their constitution. It's just not even a matter of a debate or anything. Also, abortion is illegal in Panama um, unless uh, there's two instances, unless in case of uh, rape or incest or if the mother's life is in danger. Otherwise, the abortions are illegal. So, you know, that is kind of causing a little bit of an issue here because there are a lot of people that are having a illegal, what is illegal by the letter of the law, abortions. <clears throat> um, and sometimes these things can be dangerous. But again, we know we're just presenting the data. Um, so Panama, just so you know, is taking a lot of heat for these things. You know, uh, a lot of these surrounding countries um, have yielded because a lot of the surrounding Latin countries also have a high percentage of Catholics. And they have yielded on some of these things in terms of their laws, whereas Panama has not. So Panama is catching a lot of heat from their neighbors, as well as the United Nations, on some of their conservative uh, stances. So this is just more information uh, for you about the country that you're considering moving to, just so you kind of know what you're walking into. This is the level of detail that we're going to go into and that we give you in our online course that you're not really going to get anywhere else out there. So the next thing to dive into here is the life expectancy. The life expectancy in Panama is 78.6 years. For women, it's a little bit higher, it's 81.6 years, and for men, it's a little bit less, it's 75.6 years. So the life expectancy has steadily been going up in Panama, which is a good sign and a good indicator that things are getting better. Also to go along with that, the median age in Panama is now 29.3 years. That's been going up since like 1975. And that's also a good sign. Um, when your median age is going up, that means that you're uh, implementing some better infrastructure. You know, you have better health care, you know, better knowledge of diet and things like this to kind of help that go up. So more developed nations, more wealthy and developed nations 
tend to have the highest uh, median age. So for example, if you look at the top of the list here for the world is Monaco. Monaco, you have a lot of retirees. It's a very wealthy country. You also have Japan that's up there, um, which is also a fairly wealthy country. And they also have a lot of knowledge as people know about different uh, health, health things and herbs and things like that um, that have increased their life expectancy and therefore increased their median age there. You know, on the flip side, when you have lesser developed nations, uh, the median age is a lot lower. So right now, a lot of those countries that are on the bottom of that list are sub-Saharan African nations. So, you know, when you look at this overall, you know, Panama, yes, is a developing country. It is. But overall, it's in pretty good shape when you compare it to other developing countries. As a matter of fact, it's in excellent shape when you compare it to other developing countries. Um, so <clears throat> the next thing to dig into here is the literacy rate. So the literacy rate in Panama is 96%. That's number 105 in the world. So that is up from 89% back in 1990. So again, you know, it's a good indicator that things are improving here. You know, by comparison in the U.S., the literacy rate, I believe, is like 99%, which is in line with most developed nations, fully developed nations. The literacy rate is going to be like 99%, like virtually 100%. So, you know, when compared to some countries in like Southwest Asia, they're around like the mid 70s and Sub-Saharan Africa, they're around like the mid 60s. So, again, this is another indicator where Panama is doing quite well compared to other developing nations. So, you know, this is an example of some of the data that we get into. This is just a snapshot. I know we found uh, some very, very interesting, probably some surprising things in this data for you. But this is the type of information we dive even deeper to in our online course. So again, if you are interested, you can scan the QR code on your screen or you can go to our website at PanamaRelocationOnlineCourses.com for more information on our course. We're in our pre-launch phase right now. The price is drastically reduced, but when we do the launch, the price is going to go up significantly. So if you are interested, the time to act is now. And so thank you all for watching the video. Please like, subscribe, Share it, um, and we will catch you all on the next one.